Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White. In this episode, we're going to take a look at how to create a slideshow for your fixed layout EPUB slash ebook. So, as you know, InDesign CC for 2014 got this cool new update that allows us to create fixed layout EPUBs with animations. And one of the hidden features there is that we can also take advantage of InDesign's ability to create slideshows that we typically only used in DPS that now work inside of EPUB 3 as well. So I've got one set up here on my iPad. Let's take a look at how it works and then we'll show how to build it from scratch. So here I am on the play on EPUB. I'm just going to go ahead and swipe to the next page, which shows kind of some of the cool animation that we can do inside of InDesign animated the table of contents and the text and the slideshow at the bottom. Now you'll notice that, well, this must be a slideshow because it has arrows, it has buttons on either side. So if I tap the buttons, it takes me through the slideshow. And if I tap the button on the other side, it takes me back. So that's how easy it is to navigate a slideshow in an EPUB. Now let's see how it e easy it is to actually build it. Here on InDesign CC, I've got the same uh, exact document. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down uh, to the next page, and here's where we're going to build our slideshow. Now, we're going to use 10 images that are uh, exactly the same size. That's the key here. They have to be the same size. Um, and if you know the exact size, then, of course, when you either place your first one or draw your first one, you're going to make the frame the exact size you need it to be. So I don't know my exact size, but I'm going to go ahead and just... Um, mimic one here that I think is about the right size, right about there. And to make sure that everything fits, I'm just going to use the frame fitting options default for uh, this frame so that everything is filled proportionally. So let's go to our object menu. Let's come down to fitting and let's go to frame fitting options. And we're just going to say that everything auto fits that I put in this frame and it fills proportionally from the center. Click OK. OK, so now if I put any size image in there, it will fill the frame and it will not leave any white space and it will, it may be cropped, but it will still fill the frame. Since these are all landscape images, I should be okay. And what I wanna do now is actually, let's pull this down just, to, or up just a little bit. There we go. So now what I need is nine more of those because I have a 10 image slideshow that I wanna create. So how do I create nine more? I can either option drag to duplicate them or just use the duplicate command or the keyboard shortcut. And I'll just go ahead and say duplicate, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and number 10. So we've got our 10 frames ready to go. So now all we need to do is bring in our images. So file, place, That'll take me out to where I can go grab the uh, slides. Here they are, slideshow image one through 10. They don't have to be named that way, but it does help me find them a little easier. And now I'll just go ahead and uh, shift select all 10 of them, click open. That will load the placement gun with each one. I can put them in any frame order I want. I'm just gonna go ahead and click, 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 click. You get the idea, we're just clicking, placing them in each frame that was kind of stacked and offset from the others. And last one, there. Okay, so now I've got all 10 images in the 10 frames. So the next thing I need to do is get them all selected. So I'm just gonna drag a selection that touches all 10 of them. And when I let go, all 10 will be selected now. And the idea here is that not only do they have to be all the same size, but they have to be stacked on top of each other. So whether it's two images or 2,000 images, they all need to be stacked directly on top of each other. And the easiest way to do that now is to use our alignment options here in the control panel or the alignment panel. So I'm just going to say everything aligns to the left and everything aligns to the top. And that's it. I've got 10 images now that are stacked directly on top of each other that are all set and ready to be converted into a slideshow. Now, there's no new slideshow panel here. What you do is you just use the um, object states panel that's been there for a while to convert this into a multi-state object. So keep in mind, all 10 images are still selected. We're just gonna go to our object states menu and we're just gonna go ahead and say create a new or convert the selection into a multi-state object. 
Once we do that, it's going to name it whatever the next multi-state object number is. And we want to give this a better name so that we know what it is. Uh, so we can call this, for example, uh, Musician Slideshow. That way, going forward, we'll know which one it is when it ever pops up or shows up in the menu, which it will in just a moment. The next thing we need to do is create. Now, again, if we were to just publish it as is, no one would know it's a slideshow. They would just think it's a static image. That's because we need to give it buttons, something visual, text, something to let us know or let our readers know that that's actually something they can interact with. So I'm going to show you a uh, one way to draw our buttons that were similar to what we saw earlier. I'm just going to go ahead and grab the rectangle tool. And I'm going to go ahead and hold my shift key down so that I get a perfect circle or a square, <laughs> perfect square. All right, so now that I've got the perfect square there, I'm going to go ahead and say that I want it to have a white stroke. Okay, and I can go ahead and adjust the point size of that stroke to whatever I want. I'm going to use 1.5 to make it a little thicker. And now I'm going to rotate it, uh, go back to my selection tool, and just rotate it like at a 45 degree angle. Let's go ahead and tilt it right there. All right, so now that it's been rotated, the next thing I need to do is cut it in half because that will be my two um, buttons. So I'll use the scissors tool and we'll just go ahead and click and we'll click one more time. And now that's been converted into two objects. How do I know? Well, if I click on one of them, I can pick one of them up and move it over and I can pick the other one up and move it over. See, you didn't think it was real, but yep, we just cut that in half. And of course we can align those uh, using our selection tool here. Uh, get those both selected so they're perfectly aligned uh, next to each other and we'll scoot them over kind of center center them a little bit better on the images All right, so now those are just um, shapes. They don't do anything yet. So let's make them do something. Let's select the first one And let's go in and tell it that it is going to be a button and if you don't have the object states or the button forms panels um, I'm on my own custom workspace, but if you just switch to the digital publishing workspace, it will put up all the same panels that we see here. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our ob or not object six buttons and forms, and we have the left one selected. We're just going to say that it's a new button, and this button is um, left nav. Musician slideshow for short. Again, I like to name things because it just helps me later when I'm trying to sort through a bunch of objects trying to figure out what's what. All right, so now that we've named that one left nav, let's give it an action that actually performs what we want it to do. We're going to click the plus sign. We're going to say that this button goes to the previous state, because that's a multi-state object, of the musician slideshow. If I had more than one, then I'd be able to choose which one it works on. But since I only have one so far, it's the one that we just made. Let's go ahead and do the next one. Our button here, same thing. We're going to go to um, button, make a new button. We're going to call it right nav for the musician slideshow, abbreviate it. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and say that this one, same thing, has an action that goes to the next state of the musician slideshow so it's this is all set and ready to go if i were to export this now which i'm going to this we can see this work on our desktop so let's go to our file menu let's choose export we're going to make this a fixed um, layout epub which is what we've got here we can choose where to export it to i've already put one on the desktop so we'll just replace the one i did earlier and once we replace it, it will come up with all of our options to give us all our cool things. So if I want it to use or have it have a particular cover, I would go ahead and find that cover. Let's see, it's in the, this is what my predecessor did. I would go ahead and find a cover image that I want to use, or I can just simply say, uh, just rasterize the first page. Okay, next thing I want to do is any other settings I would need to make or any page range that I would want to do, I would go ahead and do it here. But again, this is all I need is just a simple um, uh, export just to test this for the point of um, 
for the for the purpose of of course testing the slideshow so i don't really need to do anything extra here because it's not going to be the final export but let's go ahead and click ok we'll export the whole thing and uh, we'll get a progress bar and we'll just let that cook for a second or two and here it is in ibooks now, iBooks is the uh, the Apple ver or EPUB 3.0 reader that's on Mac OS 10 and iOS devices. So I can just go ahead and go to my next uh, slide here, or my next page, and I can, of course, navigate using my buttons. That's it. That's all I had to do to create a interactive slideshow for my fixed layout EPUB. And it's all ready to go. I just finished the document now, export this out as an EPUB 3.0 fixed layout, and I can share it to anyone on any platform as long as they have an EPUB 3.0 reader, which they can get free of charge for just about every platform out there. So whether you're on Mac, Windows, iOS, or Android, you have the ability to view this document. And if I really want to take this forward, I can even put it on the bookstores and sell it. But as an EPUB 3.0, I can just distribute it any way I want. Email, uh, cloud storage, folders, Dropbox, website, however I want to do it. That's it for this episode of the Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White. We'll catch you on the next one.